This is the sweet sound of success with Sue Wilhite, Profit Attraction Master. Mary Tappa is a heart-centered transformational coach and the host of Inside Out Alignment Podcast. As a sought-after professional speaker, Mary Tappa offers inspiring, content-rich, interactive workshops to sold-out audiences around the country, as well as transformational, in-depth coaching programs that help her clients achieve new heights of meaning, success, and spiritual aliveness. Mary is filled with joy and gratitude as she works with people to transform their lives and close the gap between the life they were living and the life they love living. Welcome, Mary Tapas. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Sue. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, well, it's an honor to have you. We, we, I just got to appear on your show and, um, and I think we just made an instant connection from (laughs) watching each other's, um, uh, I don't want to say performance because that sounds like we were acting. We were being very genuine. Um, our, each other's presentation, uh, right. presentation mm-hmm. on the feminine frequency uh, yep. uh, event that just happened. So that, that was awesome. I am, I am so grateful to our mutual friend, Elise, who uh, introduced us. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So I'm going to just explain briefly for our audience, the, mm-hmm. Subtitle of this show is The Hero's Journey for the Entrepreneur's Soul. And so this interview is going to follow a little bit of Joseph Campbell's story arc. And we're going to talk about Mary's ordinary beginning, which if you're a regular watcher, you know I always get a chuckle out of that because nobody's ordinary (laughs) in any way, shape or form. the call to action that brought Mary to the point of being the wonderful entrepreneur that she is, the big hairy monsters, because we all have those. And um, we want to hear about what Mary got to play with on her journey and who else she got to play with her allies, her mentors, her guides, her sidekicks, who helped her along the way, who accompanied her on her journey and helped her become the person that she is. And finally, what Joseph Campbell calls the journey home and how you integrate that into the day-to-day life. Once you have been an entrepreneur, you've had clients. I have to say that the first time that somebody hands over their cash for your services is just an amazing feeling and it changes you forever. And not everybody feels that. And so it's an interesting process of integrating into everybody else's life who are not entrepreneurs. So Mary, let's get started. What was your ordinary beginning? Thank you, Sue, for that question. Um, I would say I started, um, I did business management administration. Mm -hmm. But actually, I would not say that uh, that is what I would have loved to do. I grew up in an environment where I think I would, they, my parents were so protective mm. of me, especially my father, because I'm the, we're just two girls and I was the youngest. Uh-huh. So there were many things that I was so much prevented of, from doing. And I didn't have like role model, you know, in my family or things like that to hold my own or even guide me right. in making certain decisions or guide me in the path or looking at things that I would love to do coming from Cameroon. So it was kind of uh, difficult making a choice of what is it I would absolutely love to do. So it took some time after my bus- I did my uh, business management administration I met my husband and both of us started working Then we had a child. And from there, 
it's a long story, so I'm going to cut it short. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, thanks to the DV, Laurie, we found ourselves in the United States in 2009. Uh-huh. And that was a, the beginning, 2008, for, uh, sorry about that. And that was the beginning of another journey because I was in this place where we were in this place where we didn't know the, the system, the culture, and so many things happening and different kinds of people. So it took some time. But the, the one thing that I would really say is I have a, my husband is very open minded. Mm-hmm. He's somebody who does a lot of research, who is ready to go out there and do whatever he's got to do. And that was my first, the first person who, had, who always like would tell me, you have so much potential. You have so much that you can give to the world. And so one of the incidents that actually happened was when I, um, when I had my daughter and she was like eight months old mm-hmm. and I had an acute back pain. Mm-hmm. I am from a Christian family and I believe in the power that breeds each and every one of us, what I call it spirit, what I call it God, you know, depending on your religion, what I call it the higher power. Right. So I've never really felt that type of pain. Even, you know, having a child, you know, normally I didn't feel that pain, but that back pain was so acute and I couldn't get up and take care of our son, you know, like get him ready for school. Right. That was like, and my husband kept asking me, you need to go to the emergency. And I told him, I don't feel like I, my spirit doesn't, it's not accepting that I should go to the hospital and I don't want to go to the hospital. So he ran around in a drugstore, tried to get every type of rub or everything that he could get or patches right. you know, to help me with the pain. Right. I couldn't go to work. So I had to call off for a few days and the pain would not subside. Yeah. One night. That pain is the worst. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't like really get up from bed. I was just laying there and. It was, and I would pray, but it wasn't like I was getting, I, was, I wasn't I was like really focused. Right, right. Mm-hmm. One night he came back from work and while we were asleep around, I think midnight, I screamed. Oh. And I screamed so hard. And he oh. got up, he said, this is it. It's either we're going to the emergency or I don't know anything else to do right now. Right. I've got everything. Right. So it's like, you know, poor guy I, is probably feeling so helpless. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, what can I do to help you at this yeah. point? Yeah. Right. And I was like, uh, so I said, can you just, uh, can you just go back to sleep and let me, I need to do something. And I pleaded with him. I'm like, just go back to sleep. I will try to get up and I need to take care of this. And I was so decided like I felt in me, like this needs to go. I struggled because I told him I don't want need any help. Right. I struggled and got out of bed and found myself in the living room. I sat on the couch. I had my little iPad. Uh-huh. I had this pastor that I usually like, you know, watch and things like atmospheres for miracles and things like that. Right. And this is the time that. I, it didn't matter what the pastor was saying. I had to put my faith to work. It was about me taking charge of my life and being able to make that, you know, that which I wanted to happen in my life happen. And as I watched that video, looking at the work that what he was he was doing or what he was saying and things like that, I just held apart my back and I just kept saying, uh, probably like saying words about myself, like affirmations. I have a healthy body from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I am healed. I am completely healed. No back pain. I kept saying things like that. Many other verses in the Bible. I just kept saying it and kept saying it and kept saying it. Before I realized, I started crying. I was crying so profusely while I was speaking. My whole body was like really hot. And I'm not sure what happened, but I dosed on the couch. I don't know when I dozed off. And before I realized it was maybe, I think it was 7 a.m. in the morning. But when I got up, Sue, it was gone. 
Wow. Wow. Totally gone. And when I got to the room, my husband is looking at me like, so I went and woke. The first thing I did was wake my, my son up. Uh-huh. After like sitting there and be like, really trying to look at myself and be like, and I'm like, okay, thank you, Lord. I'm just like, thank you so much. I'm just like, thank you. Then I went and got my son. Mm-hmm. And he was like, mommy, what happened? Right. <laughs> One minute you were a child. I was surprised. Right. Like yeah. overnight or what? You know, yeah. yesterday you weren't able, or two days ago, you weren't able to take care of me. How come you're, and I'm like, the spirit did it. I just, you know, do what you know that I often do. And it just happened. I just had to put my faith to work and it did happen. Right. My husband was just, he was just like out of, he was so surprised and right. happy at the same time. Then he said, I told you, you have something in you. You need to make the world see this. And when that happened, I went back to work, but back to my activities, we meditate and things like that. And but even though I was working, I felt like there was something lacking in me. I didn't feel fulfilled. I felt that emptiness. I felt like some longings in me. And that deep longing was to serve. But I just did not know how I was going to serve. That I didn't have any, any clue. So, I, but I didn't like really pay much attention to it. Until my husband said, can you take this class right here or whatever? And then we found ourselves... Yeah, Fast forward, we found ourselves in a financial crisis when yeah. he said, oh, you need to really start thinking about something that you would love to do. You've been talking about you want to do something, you want to serve, you know, and things like that. And because we were so much into that pain being in that financial crisis, he said, uh, we sat down and as we're looking at everything, we said, okay, these being mad, being sad, being frustrated, it's not going to take us anywhere. Right. We just have to, you know, look for ways on how to get ourselves out of this because these right. kids have nothing to do with this. They're not going to understand what is happening. Right. And they don't, we need to just do whatever we've got to do to get out of right. this situation. And, and being mad or glad or sad doesn't solve anything. Any, they're anything. Emotions, they're mm-hmm. not actions. They're not reactions. A, yes, yeah. definitely. And after, when we sat down and talked about it and I started, you know, like getting into meditation and things like that, just to have some more clarity connecting with myself and paying more attention about that, that, that deep longing. And he sent me a video one morning and he said, watch this and tell me what you think about it. So when I watched that video that day, not only did I relate to the message but I related to the person. I felt a deep connection to the person delivering the message. And I was like, wow, this is it. And I was a transformational life coach who was helping people become a coach and things like that. I'm like, wow. And so I called him back. I'm like, how did you get this? And he was like, it just came through my feed. Just, you know, when you are ready, the universe work things right. in a way and put things, you know. Drops things into your lap. Thank Here. you. The opportunity, <laughs> this is it, right. And that was just it. And that's how I t- I went through that training and everything became a transformational life coach. And I, I've i never felt like, oh, this is where I love, this is where I would love to, to be or the things that I would love to do at that time. I'm like, oh, finally, I got it. Right. And because I really felt in my spirit, in my soul, like you are in the place where you would love to be and you know, and being ready to serve and give you all. And the one thing I loved about it is that you're transformed personally. So you have to be transformed personally. So you are teaching what you have gone through yourself. And that was so awesome. It was amazing. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was sort of your ordinary beginning, your call to action and big hairy monsters all rolled up. Yeah. (laughs) Into yes, one. definitely. You like, know, if, Do you think that if you had not had that back pain and gone so deeply into yourself to be able to transform that back pain, do you think you would have listened when the transformational life coach came your way? Would that have even been an option for you? I might not have... Uh thought about it like really clearly 
And I might have missed it, that I'm not sure. But because there are things that uh, I've gotten to the point where there are things sometimes that I do or I might miss. But as time goes on, I get back to realizing what had happened in the past and came to get a better understanding and maybe take action on that to move forward. Right. An example of that will be when um, I started thinking about having a partner. I've seen many relationships around me like failing a lot. And I was like, okay, finally, I really don't care if I have a partner or not or whatever. And coming from a culture where if you're not married, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, oh my goodness. And my mom, <laughs> I had a little pressure and my sister, uh, finally I got to the point where I'm like, okay, if you want me to get in marriage where people are being, you know, they're not even happy, what is that for? I don't think right. that's what I want for my life. Not really even understanding exactly what this is all about. I've been somebody who loved to like really think deep down. And I started thinking about, okay, if I really want to have a husband, what kind of husband would I love to have? Mm. So I started asking myself those questions. I didn't know what I was doing to be sincere, but I was so clear about who is it I would love to have in my life. I want to have somebody with whom I will grow. My first condition was, I don't want somebody who already have, has everything. I want somebody with whom we will build together. Somebody who's going to love me for one, who mama I am. And that I will also love and respect and cherish. I need a best friend, God-fearing, who is going to be the, a great father to our kids. Right. Like I had all this outlined in so much detail. I don't want the person to smoke. I don't want the person to be a drunkard. Right. I want somebody with whom I'm going to communicate and feel alive and be myself at all times while he is himself. So we can have some real, you know, good conversations, constructive conversations, not being afraid of the other person, but just right. letting ourselves out so we can understand each other just to build our relationship and be an example for our kids. Time went on. At that time, I really like, you know, push myself down back about not wanting any distraction or having any friend or boyfriend around here, but just focus on that goal. At the time, I had like so much pressure because so many people were coming. But when I looked at it and, you know, try to look deep down me, I'm like, no, this is not the right person. Yeah. And all the pressure, my mom was even like, oh, your friend just, your friend had a baby. I'm like, okay, I'm here to live my life. I'm not here to live my friend's life. So, right. right. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just take it slowly. You will just want to accept me just the way I am. And I don't want to, you know, do something else that, because that's her life. I am happy that she has a child and I'm happy for her, but that's her. That's her life. Right. But right. it's not so, your identity or it's not. It's not your need to have that as part of your identity at that time. Right. Right. You weren't going to just rush into something because you needed to have husband and baby checked off on the list. Thank you. Right. That's a good way of saying it, too. <laughs> so it was like, really, like, then my sister, oh, look at these people, they're doing this or that or whatever. And sometimes she would even mock me, you know, and say certain things. But I'm so grateful because I was so grounded at that time. Mm -hmm. I was so grounded. And it didn't matter what people would say to me. Right. It just did not matter. Right. I was just like, this is what I want. And that's what I want. This is it. Yes. And when finally I met my husband, something clicked. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. We had this conversation like I've never had like really with somebody. He told me about himself. He like he and I asked questions like openly. He was also a star. At that time, he didn't even have a job or whatever. And I felt that. And then one person that I always like look back to and say is my father. My father passed uh, in uh, 1999. Yeah. But he was my role model. Mm -hmm. He was 
that person that I would look up to and be like, oh, because he was so loving, so giving, and he didn't matter what people did to him. He was, he had a big heart. Yeah. And I was just like, with all the core values that he had, when I met my husband, I was like, okay, is this the right person? If my father were here, would he approve of this? If that answer is yes, is yes, I'm going for it. And when I had that, when I got that answer, I felt that warmness and that happiness in my, in, in my soul. And I felt, I'm like, okay, this is it. And that's how we started. And I won't tell you, I, that's, I, I don't even know how to put it. It's been exactly warm. I asked for. Even my mom sometimes is like, wow, you guys have a great relationship. <laughs> See, yeah. Mom, it was worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. thanks thanks to that relationship, my mom is here with us. It's what? just, yeah. It's just so beautiful. We are best friends in every, in every way. Yeah. And I'm so grateful. So those details, they matter. Then when we got here, when we were trying to get our home, we just wanted this spacious home. At the time we had, uh, I think three kids. Uh-huh. And we wanted, because at that time, uh, before that we had two bed- bedrooms. With three kids, we're like, oh, this is not gonna work. <laughs> we gotta say it's not working. Right. We gotta look, so yeah, we need to make sure that we have another, we get it home. And while we're thinking about getting a home, I started also like visualizing. We started talking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, we need a, you know, a spacious home. We need this, we need that, we need that. But I wasn't like specific about it, not at all. And when we got the home, yes, it was spacious. Yes, it was very beautiful. Like many, those who came in, they were like, wow, what a beautiful home. But you know what? The many things like the decoration, like the maybe the, the, the couch or whatever that I, I was supposed to incorporate in that uh-huh. was not present. Uh-huh. We just had like a little couch where that's fine. But we did like a lot of the pieces that a lady would love to have in your home, you know, to make it feel, you know, really just the way, you know, how we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. What was absent. But uh-huh. it took like, yeah, I just love the home. When we just got in, it didn't matter to me. It didn't really matter to me, but it's like maybe if two years later that I'm like, oh, this is what happened. You weren't clear. Right. The details. There were many pieces of that were missing. Right. And that's why you keep, sometimes you think like, oh, this thing, this thing, and they are not there. Why? Because you weren't clear enough. We did not have those details in right. there. Right. And so I had to start putting things back into perspective and filling all those gaps and visualizing them, you know, saying, okay, we have this, we have this and doing those affirmations and just being thankful that it's there and that we have it. And as time went on, everything started got filled up and it became complete. So that was just a way of saying whatever we are out here for or we would love to have in our life, Clarity is power. Right. Right. Yeah. It really helps. <laughs> yes, it does. It's, it, it's amazing mm-hmm. how much you can fill in the blanks and and be really clear and add this or better. And right. I think I think that this is what yes. I want, but if there's something better. And that is what I add now on my on wait with my affirmations. Whatever I do, I still like say this or yeah. And that is that's the thing I love about being open minded and just learning from so many people. So it's an amazing journey because coaches, whether you coach it, whether you coach, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're ever learning. And as humans, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Yeah. It keeps our brains healthy. <laughs> right. And I came from an environment where, or a community where we feel like when you've gone to school and you've started working, that's it. Yeah. You just work and work and work. Like 
there are so pe- many people don't read books. We don't like you don't look at out of perspective or learn from others in order yes. to grow. It's like when people choose that this is what they're doing and everybody just follow. Everybody else come. Oh, let's let's do this. Let's do this. And then when somebody else comes and say, "Okay, may I would love to do this other thing," you are like an outcast, right? <laughs> just yeah. because you don't fit in, right. and it is so. I don't know. And it prevents us from moving forward because it's having all these diverse ideas, diverse, you know, having people in their uniqueness and doing the different things that they would love to do themselves. That makes the community even enjoyable. And so you can have those conversations and have some really rich conversations that can help us move forward. But that is so more, that is so lacking. And well, and it prevents the kind of change and transformation and allows, to me, it allows crisis management. Yes. Right? Because if you're going along and you think that everything is the way it's supposed to be and everything is safe and everything is, you know, kind of flatline. The first time something comes you know, to, to change it, it becomes this really big deal. And, and it, you know, it's unmanageable and it's panic stricken and all of this. But if you're always sort of, oh, there's a new idea, let's take it in, let's evaluate it. Does it work? Do we just take pieces? Okay, another new thing comes in, another new things come in. Oh, we've got a crisis. Wow. Hey, some of those pieces we let go, maybe we want to bring those back because now they're useful. Definitely. Right. Instead of being. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and we put that barrier. We don't know that we're hurting ourselves. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So are you in touch with uh, your family uh, back in the old country, as it were? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I I am. Yes, I am. And, And so are you the outlier or you know, are you able to affect any kind of transformation in your family back then? I would say that uh, right now, no. I think there is this big barrier that is prevent right. The belief system, the mindset. And sometimes when you bring something up, people feel like, you're trying to show something they're not ready to receive. Right. So that I have in mind. And there are a few people who will get it, but the majority do not. And that is the saddest part. We are in this competition mindset. Right. Where people are comparing themselves. It's not a collaborative relationship. And that makes it really difficult. Right. And it's even... There is so much work to do and... Oh, yeah. Still looking on ways on how to navigate and bring that to the awareness. And uh, that is one of the things that, you know, as time is going on, that I'm really going to do. I look really look forward to have like a transformational center, not only here in the United States, but also for when I'm grounded, then I'll have to take it back back there. Yeah. So that kids can, and it's gonna be between like kids from 10 to 20, so that we start having that path about thinking about the things that we love and get ourselves like empowered, get them all empowered, bring out, bring in speakers to right. let them know that if we have the potential, our environment, our circumstances, our background does not limit our potential because Absolutely. what we have in us is far greater than any circumstance or any challenge that we might face. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that is one of the truest statements ever. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, so Mary, how would people get in touch with you Mm. When, if, if, because I'm sure that a lot of my viewers are going to be so inspired and so taken with what you're saying, they're going to want what you got. 
<laughs> so how, do you have a website? What, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, I do have a website and uh, so they can get, get uh, to me by getting on Inside Out Alignment podcast. Actually, that there you can easily contact me as well. And I do have a website as well. And you can easily go in, on there as well. It's on Squarespace. And actually, the one thing that I actually have on that website as well is I got to the point also where I wasn't like really being uh, in sync with the things that I was supposed to do because I had like this mindset of not um, taking certain actions and procrastinating mm -hmm. when you know when you know what you're supposed to do but you just slip it on the side and yes. you just go into your normal routine that subconscious gets kicking in oh, and you no, flip I channels about that. and you flip channels <laughs> and you you know and then before you know it two hours three hours is gone and then when you turn around you're like oh my goodness then you are guilty yeah so I've been there so several times and it came to the point where I had to do some real research because I was like, okay, at the end of the day, when you lay your head on that bed and you're about to leave this world, how are you going to feel? That you had all this time and you refuse to take the pain and go through what you're supposed to, to make the world a better place or you want, you want to go through the pain while you're living when you don't have any other option to right. do it again. Right. But to go in pain, you need to make a choice. And... I had to like, oh my goodness, and this is the time, This I need to do something about that. And that helped me like really get grounded in making some research and reading lots of books, watching lots of videos on YouTube, yeah. which I started priming my brain, but getting first into the, the root cause of me procrastinating. Yes. Yeah, because most of the time we feel procrastination is a habit. It, it, it's just a habit. We procrastinate, yeah. yes, it's a habit. But the real underlying course is still down there that needs to be identified. And I had to, like, identify that and really understand myself and start, you know, priming my prefrontal cortex to start doing something else or the things that will actually build me up and prompt me, actually, to take those actions that will move me forward. Right. And that helped me a lot. And uh, I decided to create that program because I knew and I heard so many people say they're not ready, especially with social media now. There is so much distraction before you right. see on your feed. This is this that is coming. This is on there. And before you know, you click one video, then another one appears and things like that. Yeah. So that helped me tremendously. And uh, I decided to create that. So it's on, on that website if nice. anybody would like to take a look at it and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. And if you're also in a job where you don't feel like this is something that you would love to do or that you feel you have, keep having this deep longing, you can also find um, a free uh, video on there, which is a three-part three, three part video on helping you to get back into yourself and being able to, you know, to start navigating and do something about about that and really identify that which you love for your life and if you need any support you know yeah nice oh that's a lovely thing absolutely yeah. people need to get in touch with that yes yeah well thank you so much mary and i have one more bonus question for you what is the one favorite thing that you love about what it is that you do? I love the transformation that people go through. Right. I love to see humanity thrive. Right. I love to see human beings bring their fullest potential. I love, just love to see us all shining. And yeah. that is the deepest joy and fulfillment that anyone can get when you see those, when people talk to you, when you see the transformation, you see their every, you, people come alive because yeah. of, what they've gone through and you see oh my god so that is what I see and that is what really gives me satisfaction and tells me yes you're doing it nice very nice yeah, yeah. so thank you very much Mary thank you for being on the show and thank all of my viewers of the sweet sound of success Thank you for what you do. And thanks for having me. I appreciate you so much, Susan. Oh, thank you. Thank Bless you. you.
are your dreams for your business? You know what drives me crazy? Really smart business owners denying their talents because they've been taught it has to be hard, because they've been taught that they don't deserve their gifts, that they're not worth anything. They've been taught that their gender means they can't express their genius. I'm Sue Wilhite, and I want you to have access to your genius. I want you to go out and rock the world with your genius. So I created the Call to Action Coaching Program. It's all about getting to the heart of you and what you've got to share with the world to make a profitable business that thrives and allows you to make a difference in the world. Click the link to sign up for the Call to Action Coaching Program today. Don't let your genius go unnoticed.